Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here. You may know me as Asa from Car Runners, and I am back with part two of my GTO bet sizing series. I got a lot of really uh, great feedback on part one. I'm going to try and answer a few questions that came up and basically continue from where I left off at the end of the first strategy pack in this sequence. And so for those of you who have not seen the previous pack, I definitely recommend uh, that you go back, watch the previous one first, and then come because I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, so I'm not going to restate too much of the material from the previous pack. I'm just going to pick up where we left off, look at uh, some new bet sizing options, look at the effects of changing some of the ranges we used in pack one, look at some completely new spots like uh, out of position single raised pots, look at some new key strategy lines and all sorts of other good stuff. So let's get into it. We're going to pick up right where we left off, and the first thing I want to look at regarding that is how stable is the optimal bet sizes that we found in part one to range fluctuation. And the goal with this is to get a good feel for, you know, how robust is the kind of bet sizing analysis and categorization that I did before to, you know, smaller shifts in ranges that might just occur with opponent to opponent variations or with bigger shifts and ranges that might occur when you actually, you know, start considering a different spot. Uh, you know, so like we'll look at instead of cutoff versus big blind in a three bet pot, we'll look at button versus big blind in a three bet pot. And so this analysis will get us, let us look at generally similar range structures of, you know, the, the actual range structure in terms of the cutoff and the button both would four bet the very top of their range. So that part's missing, whereas it's not missing from the big blinds range. Uh, the big blind will have, you know, a similar collection of premium hands and kind of strong high cards and some, you know, semi buffs that he's three betting. But we'll have very, very different range sizes and much more different than it might appear because we ha you know, when you open from the button, you're opening a wider range. And so your opponent will then three bet you with a wider range, and then you need to call a wider range to compensate for that. And so, you know, the exact amounts that people will three bet in those situations and call in those situations varies. But I took some ranges that are based off uh, population play at stars on 510 games. And in my examples, even, you know, the both players are going to have close to 50% more hands than they had previously. And that's something that can be subtle about three bet at ring ranges. If you compare an 8% three bet to a 12% three bet, you know, it sounds like a 4% gap, but it's really playing 50% more hands. So if you were to do a analogous comparison between like a 35% button open, it would be comparing it to a 52.5% button open, you know, a huge shift in ranges. So what I want to look at in this situation is does the best single bet size change? You know, we'll do the same kind of EV aggregation that we did before. Um, does the board categorization that we discussed in part one change where we use a large size on certain boards, a small size on certain boards and a medium size on the rest of boards? Does the same rules that we had of, you know, which boards use which size on, do those rules still hold? Uh, are there some new, new categorization rules we need to add or not? And we certainly would, you know, whether or not the single, the best single bet size changes uh, is hard to guess. It seems likely if we're going to have much wider ranges that we would see some categorization changes, uh, especially in the, on the boards where the new hands that we're adding to these wider ranges interact with. So, you know, lower boards, more middle card boards with more draws on them uh, are likely to be impacted by our ranges expanding. And then as part of this, I'm gonna show you guys a new key strategy line in three bet pots, and we will look at it and see if it holds up as a key strategy line in both the cutoff versus big blind and the button versus big blind scenario. And hopefully by the end of this, you guys will have a sense of you know how robust the categorization and the optimal single bet size are to you know a big shift in ranges that still preserves the general texture such that you will feel comfortable uh, using those bet sizes in your games, knowing, you know, okay, this guy three bets a little more than most of my opponents. Can I still use this categorization? Can I still use this best single bet size, etc.? Then the next thing I want to look at a little bit is how much does position change our sizing choices? And 
the first thing I'm going to do is just going to be a complete model situation, not a real world poker situation, where we look at the cutoff versus big blind scenario from part one, and we just flip the positions artificially. So we say, we're just going to pretend that post flop, the uh, big blind player is in position. And while that has no bearing on real world play, it will give us some insight into, you know, up here, we're changing the ranges and seeing how much does that change things. Down here, we're keeping the ranges constant and changing the position. And by analyzing each of those variables, position and range shifts in isolation, that will give us the ability to compare which is more important and why. After doing that, we're going to then look at sizing and categorization in button versus cutoff three bet pots. So this will be a real world situation where the three better now is in position with real world ranges that you might see in mid six play button versus cutoff. So this will be looking at switching both the position and the range composition variable simultaneously, which will be very in interesting after we've switched them both in isolation, you know, here and here. And then another thing I want to look at there is to also consider how this all relates to stack to pot ratios and to what extent key strategy lines are preserved as we change the stack to pot ratio. So in part one, we saw that uh, the action line where you're in a single raised pot and the imposition player uh, C bets the flop, gets called, the turn goes check, check, and then the out of position player leads the river and the imposition player can raise the river. We saw that that was a key strategy line, that that river raise had a huge EV impact relative to all the other possible river raises that you might want to do. And that was the case in single raised pots. What I want to look at is, is that also the case in uh, three bet pots when the C betting player is in position? So in this button versus cutoff three bet pot case. Uh, and that'll give us a sense of whether, the, you know, whether these key strategy lines are a factor of range composition or stack depth, or whether they're kind of built into the match to the matchup of position just fundamentally. And after that, we'll do a similar analysis where we're going to compare out of position C bet sizing and single raise pots, both to our out of position three bet pots and to our in position single raise pots analysis, so that we can again try and tease out, you know. Which, which factors are more important, which factors influence what position versus stack to pot ratio. And finally, I will wrap up with an out of position single raised pots key strategy line that I have not shown you guys yet. And my hope is that by looking at, you know, two completely new key strategy lines, analyzing all of these variables uh, that we didn't really get a chance to tweak and play with in part one, that at the end, you guys will feel very comfortable that you have a good understanding, not just of the you know the static state of what's the best bet size in this situation, but of the dynamics of the fluctuations. You know, okay, if the stack to pot ratio is a little higher. You know, the best thing to do moves this way. Uh, you know, I've seen a few key strategy lines and have more comfort in identifying other ones on your own. And my goal is that between part one and part two, you guys will really feel like you have, uh, you know, maybe not complete knowledge of what bet size to use in every situation, but all the fundamental concepts and ideas to go about figuring that out. So let's get into it.